watching morning live we come into you live from a platform day we actually depicting on the history of the sun community both the crew and the queer living in in uh, this area surely you've actually realized how diverse south africa is with so many languages that we have that we've been giving you here on morning live this morning but the sun community history would not be complete without mentioning the rock paintings the rock uh, engravement so we speak into the head of archaeology from McGregor museum and he's also head of heritage programs from the Salt Lake University, Professor David Mares. Prof, good morning to you and welcome to Morning Live. Good morning, Pelissa. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Now, briefly tell us about the, you, you actually said I shouldn't call them rock paintings, but rather rock engravings. Tell us about, about, about them and their, their, their significance, particularly to the Sun community. Right, well, um, some parts of the country, of course, do have rock paintings. The rock art in this part of the world um, are rock, rock engravings. We have many rock engraving sites in the Northern Cape. Um, <clears throat> they, uh, some of them are very old, um, some are a little bit younger, they're very difficult to date. Um, quite difficult to understand because um, they belong to, they, they come from the later Stone Age. Um, the art tradition is no longer practiced. Um, and uh, so there's a great deal of re research that goes into trying to understand what they mean, uh, what they signify, um, and we've come to an understanding through a whole lot of different kinds of approaches to, to rock art um, that it's a very sophisticated um, expression of the beliefs of um, the ancestors of the San people and in some cases the Khoikhoi people of South Africa. Yeah, because I wanted to ask how significant to them uh, were those uh, engravings, uh, particularly for the San community, were they engraving those rocks when they went hunting? Is there a specific area or was it just a culture? Well, um, it, it seems to relate to their shamanistic um, understanding of, of the world and, and the sort of shamanistic beliefs and practices, um, the healing dance. Um, so so it's, it's linked with a whole lot of cultural features of, of those societies of, of, of hunter-gatherers, um, uh, San ancestors. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the the engravings of Ireland, for instance, don't seem to, to simply represent an animal. It represents a whole lot of a constellation of religious beliefs um, that, uh, that were held by those people. It's quite sophisticated symbolism. And I do know that just across the road you'd find some of uh, the rocks that are engraved. How old are those around here? Well, as I mentioned, they're, they're very difficult to date, but we think that these are perhaps um, something between 1,000 and 2,000 years old. Uh, the, we have an engraving site uh, that's on the property owned by the Kung Kwe called Wildebeest Kale. Now, the Kus and the Kwe's living in this area, I mean, their lives are not, you know, the same as that of their ancestors. What has actually changed currently as compared to previously? Okay, well, um, for, for starters, the, these people originate um, from Angola and northern Namibia, um, and they, they've come out of experiences of, of conflict in the 20th century. Um, <clears throat> and here they are in Platfontein today, um, in um, conditions similar to many other people in South Africa. Um, and uh, so they're 21st century people. Um, they have a particular uh, background, particular traditions. Um, many of the people here still speak Khoisan languages. Um, <clears throat> and um, so like, like everyone else in South Africa, they have a history from the sub subcontinent. Um, and um <clears throat> they uh, seek to to promote and, and uh, uh, to hang on to many of those traditions, but at the same time they are living in the present and, and experiencing many of the problems that, that many other people in South Africa experience as well. So they more integrated into the communities rather than what, what we saw previously because they no longer go hunting nowadays. Indeed, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, it's impossible to, to live a hunting and gathering lifestyle in, in, this, uh, in this kind of context. Okay. Now, let's talk about the preservance of their culture and identity. Is it sufficiently preserved, especially, uh, particularly here in the Northern Cape? Um, a difficult one. Um, I think uh, it, it's, it's hard to preserve languages, for instance, when, when there are dwindling numbers of people speaking them. 
Um, and uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of a large number of researchers who who are helping to do that. And and there's a there's a very strong sentiment in the community that that um, that those languages be preserved. Um, other aspects of of the the cultural ways are also being preserved in 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 various kinds of. of, of situations and contexts. Um, we, we, we're very interested as, as a heritage sector in um, preserving the rock art of course um, and um, <clears throat> where the connections can be, be made to particular communities those are, are, are interesting to explore and to, to promote um, and, and obviously the, the, the San and the Khoi people of South Africa do um, see a, a, a very strong link with rock art which comes from the pre-colonial past. Okay, no, quite an interesting one, but I believe there are still studies conducted to determine you know, certain aspects that, that are not known to us. Yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, Professor Morris, thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you very much, Melissa. Thank you very much indeed. There you have it, uh, Professor David Morris. He's head of archaeology from McGregory Museum. He's also head of programs, heritage programs, particularly at the newly built Seoul Plucky University in Kimberley in the Northern Cape. Well, we're taking a break. Morning Life continues. Stay tuned.